Hi, my name is Liu Hongli. In the following 20 minutes, I will present our paper, Rank 1 Lattices for Efficient Path Integral Estimation. Inspired by the rippling effect in path tracing, we will propose the normal method to construct sampling sequence using Rank 1 Lattices that are capable in path integral estimation. This presentation will be delivered with five sections. Firstly, we will briefly introduce the path integral. The path integral describes the propagating behavior of light. Path tracing is a popular and powerful method that estimates the path integral. In path tracing, the estimation efficiency depends on the quality of the sampling sequences. The discrepancy sequences, which are used to generate sample paths for path tracing, will be introduced afterwards. We will get to know the rank 1 lattices, one of the low discrepancy sequences which is not commonly used in rendering. Since traditional rank 1 lattices are not compatible in path integral estimation, we will explain more on this later. Then, it comes to the key of our paper, the rippling effect. The rippling effect refers to the continuing and spreading results of a change. In path tracing, the rippling effect has an impact between the sampling sequences and the sample paths. Our application of rank 1 lattices in path integral estimation is built based on the rippling effect. In the fourth part, we will demonstrate the framework to build random analysis by recursively promoting the preliminary selected components. Finally, we will present our experiment results. The results support the proof of concept that random analysis are worthy candidates in solving path integral and verify the influence of rippling effect between path tracing and low discrepancy sequences. The future work based on this discovery will be followed. Since the discovery of the rendering equation, Light transport has become one of the most important tissue in photorealistic rendering. The path integral describes the light transport. In this formula, P is the complete path connected the light and the camera sensor. For better understanding, we can imagine the light path to be the trace of a photon traveling in space. The photon is emitted from the light source along the straight line and bounces several times before it finally falls onto the pixel of the camera sensor. The trajectory of the photon, from the light source to the camera destination, and all the bounces along the way, we call them the path vertices. The instance irradiance of a pixel equals the integral of all possible paths connecting the light sources and the pixel. However, such paths are infinite. We can't consider all the possibilities of the paths. We can also estimate the integral through finite samples. Nowadays, Monte Carlo and Markov tree Monte Carlo methods can achieve this estimation quite well. This method uses random or quasi-random methods to explore the light paths. A prevalent approach is path tracing and bidirectional path tracing, which you can find in almost any physically based renderers. The idea of path tracing is simple. Given the path vertex and the incident direction, we repeatedly sample an algorithm direction according to the surface's scattering distribution function of the light sources to curate the next path vertex until the path connects to the light source, forming an effective light path. Before stepping into the topic of low discrepancy sequences, let's refresh some facts about the path integration. We have just introduced the path integration as an integration of all possible light paths. In the aspect of path tracing, which path is determined by a series of random or quasi-random numbers. We treat the numbers in each path as a high-dimensional sampling vector. With the laws of generality, we define these vectors in an x-dimensional unit hypercube, such that the integrating domains become the hypercube. In this way, the path integration can act with other general integration. Its convergence is affected by the uniformity of the sampling vectors. Let's use an example to illustrate this. Say, we are estimating the area of a circle by observing the sub-area of sampled points inside the circle using a random sequence and a sobo sequence. The sobo sequence is a classic and dimensionally robust low discrepancy sequence. Compared to the random sequence, it's less likely to have oversampled or undersampled areas. Consequently, it achieves nearly quadratically faster convergence for computing the area. The distribution uniformity of the sampling sequence has a great impact on the convergence of the integration. It's worth mentioning that the integration won't even converge to the non-biased value if using a defective sampling sequence. There are many types of low discrepancy sequences. One type is digital nets. The ones that are commonly used in rendering are Sobo and Houghton sequences. Another type of low discrepancy sequences, which was developed and got popular in a similar time, is lattice loop. Lattice loop is a kind of congruence generator. The most famous one is the rank 1 lattice. Given the total number of lattice points n and an s-dimensional generator vector, the rank 1 lattice defines n sample points on the s-dimensional hypercube. 
For instance, the following example takes the 2D rank 1 lattice to demonstrate how it works. Because of their evenness, rank 1 lattices generally achieve faster convergence in numerical estimation. However, they are not as popular as digital nets to a lack of robustness, especially in the rendering. As far as our knowledge goes, our paper is the first to apply rank 1 latency in path integral estimation. This is due to the two constraints. First question, traditional rank 1 latency is bound to use all samples, which becomes the obstacle for progressive sampling. As shown in the previous example, using only part of the sample points could cause large empty spaces without sampling points, so it's expected to use all n samples in rank 1 latency by definition. We will later explain how to relax this constraint in our method. Here, I present the direct use of a traditional rank 1 lattice in rendering the corner box. You can see the result of a CBC lattice is not ideal. The lattice produced poor convergence even worse than random sampling before using all samples. Such samplers are not practical in production, especially where the artists may terminate the sampling process at a random point in town. The second constraint is the same only applicable in low dimensionality. We've mentioned this defective lattice earlier. Large empty sampling areas lead to biased results. So, when it comes to the integration lattices, we are mostly referring to the MMD or MMD-like lattices. MMD refers to the maximized mutual distance, or optimal. A MMD rank 1 lattice exists with a given into account and dimensionality of the generator vector. Unfortunately, searching for a high-dimensional MMD rank 1 lattice is not easy. The lattice search needs to iterate through all possible combinations of the generator vector, yielding an exponentially growing computational complexity with dimensionality. If we further consider the quality of incomplete sequence in constraint 1, the computation becomes a disaster. So, the first reason why lattice is hard in high dimensional integration is an empty hard problem which is impossible to resolve in finite time. Also, if we somehow computed an MMD lattice, a good distribution is not guaranteed. There are cases where defective distribution is certain. Defects are nearly inevitable in high dimensional rank 1 lattices. Therefore, the second reason why lattice is hard in high dimensional integration. With the number of dimensions increases, it becomes impossible to guarantee the evenness of the projections of every pair of dimensions. That's why we only favor rank 1 lattices in low-dimensional applications, especially 2D and 3D. Is there a rank 1 lattice that avoids its shortcomings and is capable of path integral estimation? If the path integral is just some ordinary multidimensional integrals, the answer would be no. However, it's worth mentioning a feature of path integral that differs it from ordinary integrals, which brings us hope to solve this problem. The answer is the rippling effect. Let's first look at an example. Imagine that we are rendering the interior of a Lambertian sphere. We start from the arbitrary point on the surface and use cosine weighted important sampling to reach the sphere. First, we use the random sequence. There are n multidimensional points on the sequence, and we can generate n rays and n new path vertices. It's easy to see that if the sampling sequence is random, these new vertices will also randomly distribute on the sphere. Moreover, these vertices are strictly stuck to the surface. We can take the 3D vertices and flatten them onto a unit square in the 2D manifold coordinates. In reminiscent of path chasing, this path will continue bouncing before reaching the light source. Let's focus on one of the paths. As discussed, this path is generated by a multidimensional point in the sequence. This point has sufficient dimensions, and for random sequences, the dimensions are independent of each other. Every time we generate a vertex in path chasing, it comes to several dimensions, usually two. In this way, we hope to find the path connecting the camera and the light source through random exploration. Next, let's turn our attention to the behavior of all vertices at same path length. Since the vertices are randomly distributed on the sphere at path length 1, the following new directions are also randomly chosen. We can also obtain randomly distributed new vertices at path length greater than 1. Now, let's change the random sequence to the sober sequence and continue focusing on the behavior of all the vertices. We can see that when the path length is 1, the vertices show the strong structural pattern. This structural pattern is very similar to the input sobo sequence, as if there is a certain mapping between them. We can notice that the sobo vertices are obviously more uniform than the random sequence in the manifold coordinates. 
Don't forget, the advantage of Sobo's sampler is more reflected in its high-dimensional uniformity. If we continue the paths, can we get more uniform vertices at higher path lengths? Surprisingly, the answer is no. We can see that when the path length is greater than 1, the Sobo vertices degenerate into random vertices similar to that in random sampling. We can use discrepancy to measure the uniformity of these vertices. The results tell us that there is no significance between the Sobo and random sequence when the path length is greater than 1. Is Sobo's advantage at path length 1 the reason for Sobo sequences superiority to the random sequence in path tracing? Let's look at another sequence. This time, we use the rank 1 latency. We deliberately selected rank 1 latency with obvious defects. Its two deep projections show strong linear patterns, and they do not even look random at all. We continue to trace the pair of vertices and surprisingly find that even we use linear correlated sequence points as an input. The vertices of the path quickly degenerated into random vertices as well. Let's look at all these three examples together. The difference between them was mostly landed at path length 1. The subsequent vertices showed a strong decorrelation with the input sampling pattern. This is the rippling effect in path tracing. No matter what the input sequence is, the output path vertices will finally degenerate to random. Can we make the most use out of this? Let's look at the last sequence. This time, we use the rank 1 latency. Its generator vector components are identical to the previous one, and the dimensions are permuted to make the first 2D projections more uniform. We got a result very close to the Sobo sequence. Is such a sequence capable of estimating path integral? Now, we will start to answer these questions through experiment results. First, we will demonstrate a framework for latency construction. It contains two steps. The first step is to select the candidate components for the generator vector. The second step is to permute these components to ensure that the rippling effect decorrelates the defective projections into random path vertices. Our goal is to construct a random latency whose path vertices will be similar to the Sobo sequence. To facilitate the follow-up discussion, we first propose three assumptions on the latency. Assumption 1, the interval count n is the power of 2. First, floating point numbers divided by the power of 2 are fast in binary computers. Second, if the latency computation hits the maximum integer, mb and power of 2 guarantees the results unchanged. Assumption 2, generator vector g's component is the power of 2. It's requested by the later process. Assumption 3, Generator vector G's components are odd. All components being odd integers efficiently satisfy that the greatest common divisor of n and the components is 1 and satisfy the latency definition. Next, we provide a rank function. Given the total interval count n and a set of non empty components, this rank evaluates the average distribution quality of the corresponding latency sequence in complete and incomplete forms. In particular, when we input a single component, this rank evaluates the distribution quality of its points on the one-day axis. Due to the time limit, we won't go into too much details of the rank. Using this rank, we can implement the first step of the framework to select candidate components for the generator vector G. We need to calculate the ranks for all odd numbers smaller than n, and then select the S components with the highest rank, where S is the dimension of the vector. To best illustrate the second step, we can imagine these candidate components as colored blocks. The color similarity of the blocks visualizes the rank of the component pairings. According to the previous inference, we need to adjust the first two dimensions to a better 2D projection. We can swap the second block with the subsequent block to make the color of the first two blocks more similar. But is that all? Imagine that we are rendering a scene with many mirrors, and ray bounces many times between the mirrors. Remember that each bounce comes with two dimensions. The first two dimensions we've just optimized are consumed by the mirrors. We have no way of knowing when non specular surface will appear. We can only guarantee that every subsequent 2D pairings are optimized. In this way, no matter what the thing is, we can take advantage of the rippling effect. Is there room for further optimization? The answer is yes. We can optimize not only every two dimensions, but also every four dimensions. The significance of this is to keep the defective parents as far away from each other as possible to be more decorrelated by the rippling effect. This optimization can be extended to 8D, 16D, etc. Finally, we will obtain a rank 1 latency that is good at path integral estimation. 
Here, we briefly demonstrate the render result of the rank 1 latency in path tracing and the directional path tracing. We use the PBRT renderer in this experiment. In path tracing, the rank 1 latency exceeded the performance of Sobo Sampala and Volkswagen Van and Sport Car scenes. In the Imperial Cloud scene, the two sequences achieve similar performance. The sampling effectiveness of the rank 1 latency also preserves the bidirectional path tracing. Sobo Sampler is recognized as multidimensionally robust. We have achieved similar or even better results with a defective rank 1 latency, which indicates the impact of the rippling effect between path tracing and the sampling sequences. If you are interested to know more, please refer to our paper for more experiments and results, including the off-right construction cost and the real-time sampling speed. In the end, let's share some future work on the rippling effect. How do low discrepancy sequences be more effective than random sampling in path tracing? If path vertices have degenerated into random vertices, what will be the result of replacing the subsequent sequence with a random sequence? Can we shift the attention of sampling strategy or the uniformity of the path vertices? If dimension permutation improves the integration convergence, is it possible to optimize the existing sequence or construct new sequence based on this idea? We will continuously work on this field with those questions and explore more. That's all. Thank you for watching. Please let us know if you have any questions.